So this morning I am making myself a banana smoothie. I'm probably gonna put eight bananas in there. So here's my banana smoothie, eight bananas. Personally, I'm a fan of banana smoothies because they're so easy to digest for me. It's just one food. I just mix it with water. I'm bringing a Lara bar for snack because these are so, they have the simplest ingredients. Dates, almond, unsweetened apples, walnuts, raisins, cinnamon. Literally all the ingredients. And you know what all of them are. And then I'm bringing one fourth of a cup of nuts because I try not to get like too much fat. And now I'm heading off to work. It is way too motherfucking cold for you, bitch. No. I hate that as a woman, my only option is like a fucking purse because none of my pants have goddamn pockets. shitty outside today for May 16th like what So first of all, I want to thank you guys so much for giving me um right now I'm at 794 subscribers, which is amazing because on Saturday when I uploaded the video I was at 341 so I like more than doubled my subscribers so thanks to Sorsha for shouting me out and thank you guys for watching and everything I really appreciate it and hitting that subscribe button so my last video was on Cheyenne from Shy Curves and um, trying to help her and it really was mostly directed towards her um, but really anyone with PCOS I was trying to help along the way so after my video a lot of people were commenting saying that they really wanted me to do a what I eat in a day video and like how I have kind of helped my PCOS um, just like the first thing I want to make clear is that I'm not a nutritionist obviously like I am not the healthiest person in the world um, but I do eat pretty well, I think. So, um, you know, take my advice or leave it. I'm just doing this because a lot of people requested it. And um, I'm not trying to say that I'm like the knower of everything. Like, you know, always do what works for you, but keep it plant based, keep it cruelty free always. That's the best advice I can give to you, whether you want to go high carb or high protein or whatever. I mean, I'm not going to say don't do that but keep it cruelty free that's all I ask so in my video I was trying to give Cheyenne some ideas on how to eat a high protein vegan diet with a soy allergy with a nut allergy and sometimes that can seem like kind of a difficult thing but it's actually pretty easy if you eat a lot of vegetables and beans it's pretty easy and I wanted to address the high protein issue for her because that seemed to be her main reason for going back to a high flesh diet which you don't want to do. You want to be plant-based, not high flesh. Although my video was directed more towards Cheyenne and giving her ideas for a high protein diet, I do eat a pretty high carb diet myself. So back in August of 2015 when I got diagnosed with PCOS, I was also insulin resistant. And then when I got checked again for insulin resistance in December of 2015, I was no longer insulin resistant after following a high carb diet. So I came home for lunch and I'm making myself some ziti pasta. I'm gonna make myself two servings. The kitchen is a mess, sorry. It's like really gross. Don't look. But um, I make myself two servings, which is four of these and that's 400 calories. And then um, I'm gonna have some broccoli mixed in with that. So I'm having four cups of broccoli can see it's steaming right now and then I'm bringing the rest of this pasta to work so um, I just got off work and I don't have anything for dinner tonight because 
I'm bad at planning things and <laughs> that's me. Somebody up in here smells like dank ass weed because it's Colorado. So I did talk a little bit about 801010 in my last video, but I didn't really address why I don't like it and some people were commenting about like carbs and stuff like that. For me, it's really not about the carbs. The problem that I have with like Freely and Durian Rider and other people who kind of eat similarly that preach that kind of lifestyle is that it does work for someone who is already thin, but to tell people that are obese, that have insulin resistance in a lot of cases, that have PCOS, to just eat as much as they want whenever they want does not work. I'm almost 100% sure that that does not work. Um, that's what I tried for a really long time and it got me up to 340 pounds on a vegan diet um, starting out at like 320 so I've basically lost the weight that I gained. So the reason I think it's not good to do that is because you are telling someone who really can't even feel whether they are full or not to just eat and eat until they feel satisfied. And for people with PCOS, which is usually accompanied by insulin resistance, that's just not good advice. So I don't think you should be eating until you feel full, until you can learn to listen to your body. But that's a skill that a lot of us lose over time. You know, we're born with that. But after we are put into this society that's eat, 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 and consume, 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 it's something that we kind of lose. We lose that natural um, instinct to listen to our bodies and to know when we're full. Once you lose about 10% of your body weight, which is what I have lost so far, you tend to lose the insulin resistance, which is why I'm pretty sure I'm not insulin resistant anymore. So once you get to that point, maybe you can just eat until you're full because you'll know when you're full. But with insulin resistance, you don't feel those same triggers that a healthy person will. The best way to eat for someone with insulin resistance is to eat a reverse pyramid type meal plan during the day. So basically starting your day out with your biggest meal, a lot of calories, then having a medium sized meal and then going down to a small meal for dinner. I basically did that today, didn't do the best job, but I did it. And the reason for that is because having a big meal at night can trigger testosterone production, which is not something you want when you have PCOS, so it interferes with your hormones more and usually with PCOS you're creating more testosterone and more estrogen at the same time, which is what I kind of explained in my last video. Um, also, just to clarify, I do still have PCOS. Um, since I started really eating a cleaner whole foods vegan diet back in March, um, I haven't gotten my period yet, but to me it's a lot better than getting my period six weeks at a time with just two week breaks. Um, but I do just want to make it clear that that has nothing to do with a vegan diet. Since I got my period when I was 12, I it has been a regular. I've lost it for long periods of time. Periods of time. Um, and I've had it for long periods of time, um, you know, all at once. So I've had both issues. Um, so it has nothing to do with a vegan diet, like me losing my period, it's very normal for me. So don't take that as something like, oh, this is bad for me, you know, this, this is the only way I believe to be successful, happy, and healthy is to be vegan. And the issues that I'm bringing with me to veganism reflect nothing on the vegan diet. They have nothing to do with a vegan diet. I'm bringing with me a lot of baggage to this vegan lifestyle. Also, I really, really want to stress that it is important to get enough calories, not just on a vegan diet, on any diet. Um, you definitely don't want to starve yourself. There have been a lot of things coming out recently about metabolic damage. There was recently something about The Biggest Loser and how like all of them have gained their weight back. 
and so you definitely want to be getting enough calories you don't want to get too many calories you don't want to get more than what you need for the day so you definitely want to try to learn to listen to your body um, and over time that will come it's starting to come to me I can definitely listen and understand when I'm full like I couldn't before because I had the insulin resistance and now I can definitely feel when I'm full I've got to get the glucose to the cells or I'm going to go cray. Ew. I just said cray. So this is two cups of hearts of romaine with one Boca spicy chicken patty and one cup of Spanish rice from Seeds of Change and just one serving of just Caesar from Target. Get it now. So I used my fitness pal to track my calories today. I had 2,676 calories, I don't know if you can see that, whatever, believe me. I had 73% carbs, 9% protein, and 18% fat. So I had 515 grams of carbs, 55 grams of fat, and 65 grams of protein. Again, I just want to thank you guys so much for supporting me and subscribing to my channel and watching my last video about Cheyenne and there will be plenty more to come. If you have any ideas or things that you would like to see from me um, or things you want to know more about, definitely feel free to leave a comment or message me. Um, find me on any of my social media links that will be in the description and reach out to me anytime for help or advice or anything. Keep it cruelty free and compassionate and I will see you guys later. For eternity.